you guys, I snatched Kendrick up to do Miami today. Why, hello. How are you, dear? Just barely hanging on. <laughs> barely Same. keeping it together. Same. My God, my God. Oh my God. <gasps> I'm so it's behind. Life. I still haven't recorded Jersey, and I was supposed to do that yesterday, but then more <laughs> Tom and Raquel stuff came out, and so like I just kept getting behind. So It's a lot. You've been you've been very benevolent to the Bravo community this week, so <laughs> oh, look at you. <laughs> benevolent? I don't yes. ever get called that. Mm. Here at She Speaks Bravo, we believe that Bravo TV is a great form of self-care and therapy. Look at me. I've been using it for over a decade, and I am a complete mess. That's me, by the way. I'm Emily, and I'm your host on this journey. What is this, honey? I love that. If you're not already subscribed, get subscribed and hit that notification bell, because I'm releasing new episodes at least three times a week. Clip! You fool! That's my opinion! I talk Bravo, I talk true crime, and sometimes I talk a little scripted. So whatever you're here for, I hope you enjoy the show. I normally go through with my guests. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead. I normally what I do is I do like a I go through the cast and I okay. get them to tell me like I'll say the cast name and you'll be like, this is my opinion on them. Okay, let's go. Okay, I, I, I'm just curious, immediate actually. reaction about everyone. Yeah. Okay, okay. wait, wait, wait. Based on the reunion or based on the season or based well, like, in life in general? Like what 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 you know where do you want me to go? Why don't we go at the why don't we go in general? Okay. Okay. It, but it's I mean, let's go in general. Let's go okay, in okay. general. Let's go in general. Okay. That was a I can hard do that. One. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. Okay. Adriana. Uh you know what? <sighs> <laughs> up uh, very up and down with me very mm -hmm. i hate to call her ditzy at times but very like she's one of those people that doesn't care how she uses her words sometimes which is very dangerous but she's also one of those people that i don't think she's like intentionally harmful with, like some of the stuff she says i think this cast as a whole has that problem though but some people i think are more purposefully Mm -hmm. lethal than others mm -hmm. i'll say that i don't think she's one of them but she's done a few questionable things this season mm -hmm. she's still she's still okay with me i'm not i'm not on the hate adriana train she's okay with me nicole i this you know last season like kind of midway through i really started liking nicole this season is kind of solidified it with me because the ogs are holding fast they are not letting anybody penetrate they're like nope it's us versus you you're not getting over here and nicole does not give a damn she is ready to go up against any one of them and i kind of love it you know what the the reunion seating was a little questionable to me at first but i get it i get it uh, okay yeah mm -hmm. gertie I know now where you, you stand know. on Gertie. Now you know. <laughs> I love me some Gertie. And even, even if I hated her prior to this reunion, that dress would have changed my, oh my damn mind. That what? dress is ridiculously perfect. Listen, that is a potential mother, okay? <laughs> that is, Gertie is everything I need her to be. I'm still hoping for the spinoff. I need a Gertie. The HGTV bust. Show. The bust yes. on that dress was so perfectly done. They found like the perfect cover-ups yes. to like match the skin tone yes. perfectly. It's like, okay. So good yes who do we ever find who made the dress I mean, that's that's He's an independent an independent designer too so she she showcased Ooh. like a local designer i want to say like not a Go smaller Gertie. designer yes so it that was all that go, good all around listen that goes to show you because some of those girls were wearing like uh some of the like big fashion houses and looked the fool I'm sorry they yeah, did, well, and yeah that just goes to show you support that, local <laughs> coming up next is alexia and i did not like her dress at nope, all she looked i'm you know what i'm glad she did have the black at the bottom though because otherwise lisa would look entirely out of place but because there was uh, yeah. someone else similar in that color theme, Lisa was fantastic. I was like, okay, so now Lisa I, I, looked don't, I don't mind. Yeah, I'm like, I don't mind saying you looked amazing now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. how do we feel oh, about Le Alexia then? Bottom of my goddamn list. Alexia <laughs> yeah, is, oh gosh. I she am, was so up here, man. And this yes, season. That, you know what? 
she's now over there with the Leah McSweeney's, the Heather Gay's that have just been like the fan favorite that immediately like takes a nose dive with people. I don't know what she thought she was doing coming into the season, but she's made some like, my pet peeve. Like I, you know me, I'm not the harshest on people. I can forgive a lot of stuff because I don't, you know, carry this around with me all the time. So like I can forgive a lot of stuff. My pet peeve in terms of housewives is someone that cannot own something and apologize. It's like, I hate yep, someone that absolutely same. cannot apologize when you know you are wrong. You just have to, well, you did this. Okay. But maybe both of y'all are wrong. Like it's okay to be wrong. Just apologize. She's the queen of that. And I'm so glad he read that question and called her out on it because you Andy need to know. Was, Andy did his job today. He did a, a rare occasion, but yes. he actually did. Yes. Good for him. I know how I know this answer already. Marisol. Child. Mm -hmm. Her aunt, it, it, Alexia is bottom and Marisol is bottomer. Bottomer. <laughs> so like, that is bikini bottom, actually. I something Marisol is those two together. You know what? When they're separate, I don't mind them as much. Together, they are way too much for me because it's one of those situations where one person can't just speak their own thoughts. The other one has to defend them. Even if they want to say they're wrong, the other person has to jump in and defend them no matter what. And it's like, both of you look like idiots because you both yeah. just want to be wrong all the time. For what? Like, it makes no sense. I'm they over that friendship. Dumb. They look yeah. really dumb. And I hope they take a nosedive during Ultimate Girls Trip. That's what I'm looking forward oh, to. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. They're Get them, Giselle. Get them. Lisa. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lisa. Uh, Lisa is pretty middle of the pack for me. I loved her story. This oh, well, hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, I <don't>, right? <laughs> I don't mean to say Let's that. Let's clarify. I, we don't right. mean we loved her suffering. Right. Don't love the stuff. I love that she puts it all out there because a yeah. lot of people wouldn't. So I appreciate her for really kind of just living in her truth a little bit. Some of those stories she was telling, we'll talk about it, but some of those stories she was telling, I was kind of like, Mm, they've accused you of some things like, and I'm kind of starting to believe like some of those stories didn't ring true to me that she told at this reunion. And I don't know why, but I was just getting a feeling like, what are we doing here? Like why, why wasn't, I don't know. She came across as like Sonia Morganist, like telling the story. I don't know. Oh, it was well, really weird. Okay, but, We'll get into, I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. We'll go there. I, okay. We'll get into mm -hmm. that. But no, but no qualms with Lisa at all. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good with Lisa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Julia. Ju you know what i don't mind julia probably as much as everyone else does i actually shockingly enough i like the i dream of genie look because i was a, a barbara eden fan i like me some i dream of genie so i kind of like the look if you're going to go for that look do it at a reunion it's kind of like i like candy in the dungeon reunion with the all black like if you're going to wear that outfit i mean that might be the perfect place yes master candy I i'm here for it so i i like this look um it almost kind of seems, though, which I, I hate sometimes, she always kind of seems to be, her story at least, kind of rooted in tragedy every season. Mm. And that's kind of depressing. But so I hope <laughs> we get to a point where we get to see her like living her best life on this show. But I, I doubt that next season is going to be that because of what, you know, she yeah. has to go through. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Larsa. I okay. Most time, most days when I wake up, I get on the side of bed that I love Larsa and the mess she creates. This reunion was a perfect example of me, her getting on my last nerve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but most times, I like the mess that she keeps up. I don't like that she throws out like life altering uh, rumors about people and then just be like, oh, that's just what I heard. That's what I heard. Because mm -hmm. if people did that about, I mean, like, if you're not going to own a BBL, if you're not going to own yeah. dating somebody you used to babysit, like, if you're not going to own any of that, then you need to, like, back the fuck down a little bit. Yes. So, yeah, Larsa really kind of depends on the what time depends of the bed on I wake the up day. on. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Me too. Mm -hmm. This is an obvious one. Kiki. Oh my gosh. I love Kiki. And I think she's in the, she's like in the perfect lane on the show too. I would love to see more of her. Like if she were to be bumped up, I would love that. But mm -hmm. I think she's a great friend of like, she totally does what she needs to do at the perfect times. So I really, I really enjoy Kiki on this show. I think her first season versus this season, 
polar opposites and she is direct she's the, the the definition of the season two glow up she is really like she didn't need any help in the you know the style department like she's a model hello but i i was here for every single thing she brought this season and she started it episode one and she did not slow down i'm here for kiki I feel like if I feel like if someone says they don't like Kiki, that would be a no, that would actually be like a red flag for them right. as a person. Very like, weird. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> Putting you on my list of people to watch out for. Exactly. Um. Okay. Let's get into the reunion. Okay. Shall we? It's so dark. Let's, let's do it. My lighting is horrible today, but that's okay, y'all. Bear with me. <laughs> it actually doesn't look bad. Okay, I'm going to put my mini light on, see if it helps at all. Not really, but it's okay. <laughs> it didn't do anything. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> it didn't do anything. Um, I like that Lisa's man, Lisa's new boy, that's a friend, is there. Yes. And he looks, I love, he looks nothing like Lenny. He is tall. Mm -hmm. He is thin. He is supportive. So I'm about to say, seems nice, like a genuinely it nice person. Seems like he likes her. Mm-hmm. I like I mean, that. Lenny never seemed like he even kind of liked her, so. Right. Like, not I ever. Not even from the OG seasons. No. No, it was never a, never a ting. No. Never a ting. The set <gasps> is Nicole's engagement party, and I lived for her going, Larsa, does this look familiar to you? <laughs> I'm telling you, I like me some Nicole. <laughs> yeah, she owned that. And Larsa, Larsa didn't get it. She's like, it doesn't. No. Right. <laughs> She's like, oh, that's funny because it's the game set. That's where we had our engagement party that you weren't invited to. <laughs> Missed opportunity. They should have like immediately flashed back to her getting that invite. Uh -huh. Like that would have been comedic gold right there. But it's all right. Yeah. Dude, Scotty Jr. is playing with the Lakers. Uh huh. That is Period. no joke. Uh huh. That goes every game. I love that. Yeah. Um, so Andy starts going because Gertie's dress is like, it needs a moment. So he's mm -hmm. like, Gertie, stand up and give us a moment to look at this dress. And then yes. he goes to Julia and he's like, Julia, OK, yeah, you have a dress <laughs> on. And then she goes, do you want me to stand up? And he's like, sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he goes, it takes a lot of confidence to show your midriff. <laughs> this reminds me Amy Schumer has a bit in one of her stand up routines where she talks about how when she posed nude for one you're of so her brave. photos, you're so yeah. brave. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, that is not something you want to be called when you stand naked in front of yes. someone. You're like, wow, you are so brave. <laughs> and there's Andy saying it takes a lot of confidence oh, to no. show your midriff. And she's and she's even like, yeah. What? <laughs> That's like it's so funny because like we have like in a black community have like a running joke where people, you know, no one ever calls a baby ugly, but you know, not all babies That's are cute. as aesthetically pleasing pleasing as others you know and so it's so funny whenever an older black person like asks to see your baby and you show them to them and they're like oh my look at those little shoes those are just the cutest <laughs> little shoes right <laughs> look at those bows oh my god those barrettes how adorable <laughs> it's like you're commenting on everything but the face can you can you call my baby cute please thank you <laughs> Then Alexia, though, Alexia's like, let me show you the back of my dress, Andy. Girl. And he's like, I didn't. And by the way, the back of the dress is like not that interesting. It just like ties no. in the back. <laughs> She's like, it's like Halle Berry. I'm like, from what? Oh, right. Like from nothing. Like it's from like, a, when like it's any dress. It, any literally it's a project runway dress where like they got overzealous and are like oh my god they're gonna love this the simplicity the cut of it and everything and then uh Heidi Klum's like yeah that was a choice but not a very good one that's yeah. what it felt like nothing nothing I needed to see it was so late and Andy Andy could could bear, Andy's down. like okay <laughs> Andy couldn't give her anything he's like that's yes okay like, sit right. down he's like sit down I didn't tell you to stand up okay right let's get this started thank you sit down Dude, they did a shot of tequila with no chaser, no lime. Jesus. I would not. I've been able to do that. I, I might have thrown up. <laughs> uh, like, they, they just put a... Those looked lukewarm. Those look room temperature. Right. He's like, here you go, everyone. There you I go. Can, I can <laughs> shoot a lot without a, trace, a chaser. 
Tequila is well, not one of them. Well, I just got, <laughs> oh, I just got like flashbacks of the taste and the smell of that. And oh. then they just had to like, okay, now let's go to the first package. I'm like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> right. Like not but even you, some water, nothing. I'm about to say, I don't, I don't know if you noticed though. And now I just kind of put two and two together. When they were about to take a break at one point, Nicole was like, can we get I some need water? water. Like, yeah. <laughs> And oh, that's got to be I why. noticed it. I was like, have they gone this whole time with just the <laughs> remnants of that tequila in their oh. throat? Mm. Ew. <laughs> Goodness. Harrowed. I was harrowed by the thought of that. I'm like, now they just have to answer some questions with the just like the burning and they're like, and deal with it. What is happening? God. It had to be like, it, it's got to be something like Deleon or something like to where it's got to be a quality Watered where like down, it's okay. please tell right. me it was like half water uh, uh, i can't even imagine that mm -mm. goodness gracious they did ask nicole right off the top like bitch how do you have so much money like how do you, you know i love that me that was my too. favorite part because <laughs> i was like yes i'm glad we're getting right to this because yes. i have questions too mm -hmm. and it was like how the hell did you afford a 40 million dollar house and she's like well to be clear we bought it for 13 million a year and a half ago i'm like wait the, what the fuck did you do to make it worth 40 million you put in a fucking mausoleum in the basement like what the fuck did you do I think she needs to definitely let people know what she did to up the value. Mm -hmm. But then Alexia tries to be like, but is that your money or Anthony's money? And I Such go, are you, are you trying to do that, girl? Right. Are you trying to do that? Of all people, get the fuck out of here. What are you? What money are you making? Uh, none. That, Residuals geez. from that cocaine cowboy documentary. It, it, what the <laughs> hell was that? And also, what are you proving? Nothing. She's. Did you, are you? Are you continuing to forget she is an anesthesiologist? Right. Like she can. No matter what you say, she can always trump you with that. <laughs> she can always go. Always. Don't worry about it because I'm gonna go to my job, my profession as a doctor. Mm hmm. That is a very lucrative type of doctor, not like the little tiny, like, I don't, she's, she's like an urgent care doctor in some strip mall. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know, like, it's potentially deadly if she doesn't do her job right. Alexia. This is just so weird when they try to come for Nicole. She can beat all of you at this that, game. That whole side of the couch has that problem really bad. And it was yes. the thing that, like, that lights me up the most about this show, because I, listen, I don't know where like a Larsa Pippen, I don't care how people take this either because I'm over this shit. I don't understand how a Larsa Pippen or an Alexia, what's what the hell is Alexia's last name? Napola? Napola. That's that sounds correct. Okay, we'll go we'll go with that. Is that right? say, do I even know what her last name is? It used to be Echevadia or something. Right. That that and sounds I way more she, familiar, but it is new. And it's because it, when Andy introduced her on Watch What Happens Live, it was Napola. Okay. And I was we'll like, oops, I've been putting the, I've been saying the other one for a minute. But You're I think right. that's her new married name. I think it is. Okay, yeah. Todd, oh, stupid Todd. Um, I think when both of them, like in Marisol too, when they particularly come at uh, Gertie or Nicole about like, I'm like, what are we doing? Y'all really, y'all of all people who literally do nothing are coming at the woman that gets written up in Vogue and gets like every magazine placement in the world. You're coming at the woman that goes, that, that is what we consider what uh, a, a, a critical responder who is going to work and actually like, are you like, are we serious right now? Julia Ugh. does discuss the double cancer diagnosis. Mm. And I was terrified when she said that Marina actually had a mammogram a few months prior that they right. missed it. God. What? Can you, I wonder, you know what? I'm going to write in to Ebony K. Williams. Them. Right. I'm going to write to Ebony and I'm going to see if, I wonder, do you think that's actionable? I mean, like I know right? obviously like, getting her back to That's the point you get them done. Right. I can't imagine. I would imagine it isn't, but like I couldn't imagine going for like uh, some kind of exam, you missing a cancer, and then I start to feel worse and come back. You're like, oh, it was there. We just didn't see it. Like that could have genuinely, like I know they're optimistic about like how this will turn out, but 
that could have been a much worse situation. I couldn't imagine getting that news and not being like, okay, I'm 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 definitely gonna fight this, but like I kind of want to go to court first because what the fuck? Yeah, because it like she was lucky, unlucky, lucky that she found it because of something else. Right. Dude. A double whammy too. God. Yeah. I could like when she said that they missed it in the mammogram. It's like, wait a minute. So she even did the mammogram. Like, that's what you do when you're being care. You know, when you're doing the stuff you're supposed to do. It's now now I'm going to be a psycho. Right. I'm going to be like, listen, Marina, when she got hers, they're going to be like, who's Marina? I'm like the tennis player. (laughs) I always I this is so random and like has absolutely nothing to do with me, but I uh t- when women talk about like mammograms and stuff, I because of like my own family members, I always tell them like, look, when you get a certain age, stop letting those doctors like give you that that one mammogram like that that one and done, and then come back next year. No, do the one for women that have dense breast tissue. Make sure oh. they give you that one instead because that's the one that like really oh, like okay, it's up in there. That's the one that like finds pro all the tip, stuff. guys. Pro tip. Yes, I've had two family members recently who've had to start doing that. And it's because like when they went to get the like regular mammogram, they were like, we see some weird stuff. We're not sure what's going on. We need you to go to a specialist. So obviously both of them, right, both of them like shuddered, like Ugh. being scared as hell. But it's literally because the tissue in their breast is so dense that it they the normal see, mammogram it isn't always up. right. So if you think you're in that category, man, oh man, do yourself a favor and to start requesting those. I wish I knew what they were called. God. Well, you've got a lot of followers though. Like somebody, we, somebody let us know. <laughs> I've been on a hair journey, and what I have learned is there is just simply no one size fits all solution to hair care because your hair and your hair goals are completely unique to you. Like I have been dealing with a ton of shedding and hair loss. My scalp gets very oily and also I've been dealing with a lot of flakiness. But thanks to my personalized pros routine, I honestly can say that I've never been more in love with my hair. Pros makes custom hair care that's effective because it's personalized and they use natural ingredients that have very proven results. And every product in your routine has been customized for you specifically from the shampoo to the supplements. And first you do this consultation, which is fun. It's like a quiz. And they ask about your hair goals. So like I said, I want less shedding. I need more volume, less oiliness, fix the flakiness in my scalp. And in this in-depth consultation, they ask about you as a person. Pros ask some sort of unexpected things like where do you live, your eating habits, how often do you work out? But they factor in environmental factors like UV rays, pollution, humidity, wind, So then pros takes your answers and handpicks these clean ingredients to help you reach your hair goals. And guys, these are ingredients I would put in like a green juice. They gave me this pre-shampoo scalp mask. I didn't even know you make those. And there's grapefruit oil, hyaluronic acid, plant collagen, kombucha tea, and probiotics. This helps with scalp soothing, scalp health, fiber repair, hair strength, sebum control, kale, spirulina, vitamin B6. Also, I got supplements that help with scalp health, hair growth. My hair has never felt stronger, fuller. I even got compliments just the other day because I went to the dermatologist and they asked if I had extensions in my hair. I said, why? They said, you have very thick hair. Me. Okay, I'll take it. As a carbon neutral certified B Corps, Pros is an industry leader in clean and responsible beauty too. All their ingredients are sustainably sourced, ethically gathered, and cruelty free. They're also the first custom beauty brand to go carbon neutral. And if you're not 100% positive, Pros is the best hair care you've had. They will take the products back, no questions asked. 
Pros is the key to achieving all your hair goals this year. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash she speaks. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash she speaks for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. For us Bravo fans, specifically Vanderpump Rules fans, this has been a stressful week. We are overstimulated and exhausted with all of the new information coming in about the Tom and Raquel scandal. And usually this would make me kind of panic, go into stomach aches and headaches and anxiety. But because I've incorporated Just Thrive Probiotic and Just Calm into my daily routine, I'm feeling good. The thing about Just Thrive Probiotic is the strain that they use arrives in your gut alive. And I did not know that that was not a thing all probiotics did or were supposed to do. But by arriving in your gut alive, it gets rid of bad bacteria and replenishes it with good bacteria. And when your gut health is good, your mental health is good because a bunch of serotonin and stuff that you assume is just in your brain is actually in your gut. Life-changing information. If you have kids too and they're like, ew, I don't want to take a probiotic, you can just open the capsule and sprinkle it in food or in drinks and they won't even notice. But now about the Just Calm. Just Calm has kept me level headed. And it's because it's clinically proven to promote a healthy response to everyday stress, encourage a steady, serene, and balanced mood, drive mental clarity, focus and alertness, and even support great energy and optimal sleep. Hello. Just Thrive products have more clinical research than just about anyone else in the industry. They're all natural and they have a money back guarantee. If you're ready to up your wellness game and beat bloat, digestive issues, stress, and more, you can get 15% off a bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic and a bottle of Just Calm when you use promo code SHESPEAKS at JustThriveHealth.com. While you're there, make sure to check out all of the other research-based products. They have everything you can imagine for optimal gut and immune health, and they even have a probiotic for your fur baby, all with a bottom-of-the-bottle guarantee. Take control of your health this year with Just Thrive. I love Andy's like, so uh, how are you doing, Lisa? She goes, I have good days and I have bad days and I have really bad days. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. Girl. This yeah. sounds like a, a, a corny ass like VH1 song that they would play in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, fuck my life. Right. Here's where Larsa starts chiming in and she will continue to chime in whenever <gasps> anyone talks. Right. So Lisa, like Andy asks, like, where's, you know, where's the stat? What's the status of the divorce? And Lars is like, it took me three years. And so she will now continue to do this as soon as every anyone, moment. every single person talks. Um, and she wanted Lisa to be invited. Lisa, uh, Lenny. Lisa was like, yeah, I said you guys could totally invite him. Everyone gets panicked. There's like a moment of tense yes. silence. And Andy goes, he did decline. And they're like, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> Thank that would have been the God. best kept secret because I was like, <gasps> we like, didn't know here? that. Right. But how amazing was it when Lisa's like, I thought you could have maybe been our mediator. And Andy goes, we did save a marriage at the Married to Medicine reunion. And I was like, mm-hmm. they did. Mm-hmm. Simone I forgot Simone, they literally did. Yes. They oh were my God. about to divorce and they saved their marriage that's insane it is you don't see that at all it literally sometimes takes other people people that you trust that are your friends that won't normally give you an objective opinion to actually tell you like okay you tripping like no you're the one in the wrong in this she's telling you this go acknowledge it like you're about to throw away your marriage for nothing and that's what it took for them it was an yes. am- that was a top like five bravo reunion moment like that was amazing I like that Andy just sort of stepped back too. Like he he let them do it. And at one point mm-hmm. he was like checking his phone. Like he was like on. <laughs> I swear he was like on Instagram. And then he was like, "Yeah, 
He like he chimed right. back in. He's like, uh-huh, what they said. That's a good point. And then just went back to checking his phone. I was like, yes, true. Don't get too involved, but get enough involved. Right. He just a he little. did a good job. He did a good job. He didn't he didn't try to take center stage, but he would chime in and be like, No, that is ridiculous. You are being mm-hmm. stupid there. And it's like, oh shit, Andy thinks so too. That, right. I want to go back and watch that actually. That was a good one. Yeah, that was really good. Season Six I don't remember, but it's an easy Google and yeah, then it's easy an easy find, find because mm-hmm. that was a that was really historic television. Yes. It's so you don't one. see a marriage saved on reality TV. You see no. a marriage ruined. Like every day. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh and then he goes, Let's talk about the hot mic moment. I was like, Yes, let's fucking talk. Like, I forgot this season's been so good. I'm like, yeah, let's talk about it. Right. And this was crazy. When Lisa's like, I was suspecting for a for a bit, and Lars is like, Yeah, she caught him in the hot tub together, and everyone's like, Okay, elaborate. Let's right. keep, explain <laughs> this. And it's funny because I was expecting Lisa to be like, It's not, it's not what she's making it out to be, but it was exactly what she's making it sound like. <laughs> she's like, You know, they were really close, like their faces. It was, it was inappropriate. Mm-hmm. And there, and then she's like, So I grabbed Lenny and was like, Come with me. You're coming with me. And then I gave her a look, you know, like I gave her this look. <laughs> Alexi is like, You're too nice, bro. Right. I'm already like getting up out of my chair. Yeah, Lisa, what do you mean you just were like, get over here, Leonard, and listen, right. lady. <laughs> right. So, That's, that was one of the parts where I was like, girl, okay. Like, uh, I don't I don't know any person that reacts that way. Like, what do you, because maybe she was trying to make it sound like it more than it was. I don't believe that part of it, because I honestly think she was more like, she saw it and she kind of told someone else, like, He's out there with some chick. Like, what is going on? What is this? And so, if anything, someone else probably confronted Lenny in the hot tub. So, hey, your wife's over there pissed off. Get out of the hot tub. Go over there. I don't know if Lisa, honestly. Oh, oh I see what that. you're saying. I mm-hmm. see what you're saying. You're saying she didn't take any action, but she could tell by the people's reaction that she was mm-hmm. supposed to have done something. Yes. So she made that up completely. Right. Because that whole oh. thing she's telling the story, I'm like, girl, okay. <laughs> so you're saying she saw them in the hot tub and was like, what's Lenny doing over there? But right. But then she could tell by the way they were all reacting that she should have done something. So then she pretended that she's like, oh, no, I went over there. Mm-hmm. I went over there and I said Lenny you get over here and I gave her a look and when she didn't do any of that and that's okay. what it feels like to me it feels like I can get you know one of those that. situations where someone you like you know someone expects you to do something you kind of like t- start a story you don't know where it's going to end you're like oh and then <laughs> no, I went by the bank and then <laughs> totally. the bank teller told me <laughs> it's like what where, where are we going with this what is happening <laughs> I know exactly what you mean too and you're like this isn't real like you're, right. you, you almost like, want to tap mm. them out, but you're like, I'll let you go because it's too embarrassing for me to be like, this didn't happen, did it? It's it's that meme, literally. We're like, uh, I know you're lying, but it's kind of entertaining, so I'm gonna mm-hmm. let you finish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's yeah, exactly what it was. Know. Yeah. Uh, that's fair. Mm-hmm. But Lisa still buys Lenny groceries, so Girl. that was. Yeah, I, it must be tough because of the kids. It's like. She she probably has because I I bet she's worried that he he's probably doing a lot of shitty things with the kids. Like if you want your kids to have groceries, then you got to buy them. Right. Probably. I 100 I percent believe that. Can I tell you, though, I had to literally catch myself when all this reunion evoked a lot of emotion out of me. I will say I, there was a couple of points where I almost want to like stand up and scream at the TV. Me the too. part where she said, well, my kids, uh, you know, they're there, too. I got to get them groceries. I literally almost said, girl, fuck them kids. And then I was like, oh, no, those are those are literally your kids. Okay, sorry, never mind. <laughs> you're like, wait, 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 sorry. See? <laughs> See, I forgot, forgot where I was. Sorry, nope, okay, you're right. Yep, feed the kids, sorry. This Halloween party that, what, Lenny's a nasty, nasty man. First of all, why did they have to co-host a party together? I don't understand. Why would they ever co-host this, a party together this is so weird that you that man put you through all of that and you're still like well it's our annual party so i gotta so weird that's why I, a lot of this stuff i don't know what to believe with this i fully believe that lenny is one of the world's most horrible human beings i for i'm in the camp right now though that i don't know 
if Lisa is as detached as she claims. Oh yeah, that's right a now. good point. That's where I think she's. I think she probably regresses a lot, and she's like, you know what, this might work out. I might save my marriage. He might not want to be with her, and and you know what, some it just takes some people yeah. longer to get there and all that stuff. But I don't think she's nearly there yet. It's got that. It's the very high school, like the high school friend who's mm-hmm. like pretending to her friends like she's like oh yeah no i'm not even talking to his ass fuck him but right. then is still like doing his homework and all the <laughs> right. like toxic shit that he that they used to do together and you're like mm-hmm. are you still and it's like no no i told him to fuck off yep. no you didn't so yep. that's what this party feels like because it's like they, well she's like i still live here you're not gonna throw that party without me and he's like well do you want to host it together and she's like okay Right. <laughs> Immediately, yes. Uh-huh. Yes, sure. uh-huh. Totally. Oh my God, I'm sticking these these uh, wallpapers. <laughs> like, yeah, no, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah. Um, I like Andy being like, why the fuck did he even agree to film? Like a date night thing with the kids? Like, great question. Right. I was I I kind of forgot that too. Like, yeah, the beginning of the season, he's like, Yeah, no, I'll sign the contract and we'll do it. And but then Turns out he was going to wait until they wrapped, but after the good vibes party, she went out with friends till 4 a.m. and was hung over the next day. <laughs> and he was disgusted with her and said he wanted a divorce. But apparently he's been saying the I want a divorce thing for 15 years. And that's Ooh, abuse. That's that is fucking absolutely abuse. abuse. Yeah. That is manipulation. That is gaslighting. That is control. Yeah. That is that is every adjective you can throw at it. That is way too fucking much. He's yeah. one of those men. I always, uh, Wendy Williams was a mess a lot of the times, but she was one person that always says, if I'm in a marriage, I'm not throwing that D word around unless it is like fully mm-hmm. serious. Like if it's the point where we need to get the hell away away from each other. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'm not just going out there and throwing that word around. And for somebody to be as manipulative as him, to know that she relies on him financially. And it's it's so it's, it's so many like forms of manipulation in one to threaten divorce every time someone makes you mad or if they yes. stay out late once or, it's so gross. Lenny is so gross. Ugh. Cause like We've already heard that Lenny's already leaked that those were the issues that Len- that Lisa's been out just partying late all the time. And that's been that's been his issue and she won't stop. So Andy kind of gently is like, you know, he's portrayed you as living separate lives because you go out all the time. And she's like, he goes out, too. But I like that she as soon as she was like, Miami's a late place. Dinner's at 1030. I was like, that's true, actually. Yeah, that's very true. Mm-hmm. It's, and and Gertie and Nicole are co-signing all of it. They're like, she's allowed to go out once a month, have fun with her friends. Like, stop. We're not going right. to we're not playing into that bullshit. But I can, I noticed that Alexia and Larsa weren't saying a thing to that. I feel like they very much play into the toxic male narrative. You know, even they though play- we've seen Larsa out with future and all these people at God, what leaving the club at five in the morning mm-hmm. larsa please girl. i just felt i just noticed that they didn't chime in being like mm-hmm. yeah she can they just they, but gertie and nicole were like we're no 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 we're not gonna we're not doing that exactly i was cracking up though when lisa's like i worked at the spa for free <laughs> right it's like what spa <laughs> we've never once seen you at a spa what what are we talking about? What are you talking about? Like, please don't act like you were a hardworking <laughs> woman. Like, right. it's okay. It's okay. That was the relationship and the dynamic you guys set up. Like, that's mm-hmm. okay. He's got to be changed in his, it. It's got to be in his clinic or his place, right? Because I, I feel like I don't know why I just got like a flashback of her in like a scrub outfit, like I do coming too. to eat lunch. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ma- so yes. maybe I, it's got to be something with that with like the husband's yes. the owner and like you know what what are they you trying to get? They built a spa in the early. Se- I feel like he was opening a spa in the early seasons. Maybe yeah 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 yeah. Okay, but so it's not like she was she, a hard work. Like it's okay, right. <laughs> even if she wasn't. That's the dynamic. I don't like when. That's the dynamic he wanted. He clearly wants to be the the more powerful one in his yes. relationship. Then he gets resentful of that and then gets mm-hmm. and, and then takes it out on the partner. Like, oh, well, now you're just not going to you're not going to work as hard as I am. Well, then you didn't want that. He clearly wants a more passive woman. Yes. And then he gets resentful and he treats them like shit because he's an abusive person. He wants a housewife, a stay-at-home mom, someone that's going to be in the gym 24-7 to keep the body right. and 
somebody that will agree to have threesomes once a week uh, with him. He's gross. Ugh. Super. Um, thank God Lisa said she doesn't still love him because I was worried that she because she took too long to answer that. I was like, eh, eh, eh. right. <sighs> thank God. Sure. Thank God she's got that man, the new man who's actually nice. I'm rooting for him. I'm I'm yeah. uh, giving you the benefit of the doubt. Be a nice guy. Okay. <laughs> they say he's a tech guy. Do we know like any like what he's done or I I mean I guess we could Google him. He's like a tech mogul. Oh, I hope he's a venture capitalist and has like some I, stock I think in that's Uber what he or something. Is. Ooh, I, I know think that's he's Lisa. big time. Lisa, I think better, so. I bet she get over Lenny as soon as that man propose. <laughs> let's 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 look him up right now in real time. Let's see. Okay, here. let's see here. Lisa Hockstein, boyfriend. Who is Jody Glidden? Okay, five things to know. Let's see. Ooh, not five. Okay. <laughs> Come on with the Can five. Can we get to boy. the five? Let's see. He has <laughs> he has one child. He has a daughter. That's Perfect. good. Perfect. She's That's got two good. kids. That's good. According to his LinkedIn profile, he is the co-founder and CEO of Intro Hive, which is uh, one of I'm the looking fast, up right now. fastest growing B&B, Renee, I don't know what that is, acceleration systems. Prior to launching his company in 2012, the tech entrepreneur worked as the head of productivity and execution of ch for chalk. I don't know what any of that stuff meant at all. <laughs> he there's something about his hobbies. He went to Harvard, uh, and mm. he lives in Miami. Okay, that was all I need to know. He went to Harvard. Okay, so, so everything else might be legit. So okay, so Ooh, he this feels, is a nice website. Okay, okay. The, what's it called again? Intro Hive. Intro Hive. Yep. I'm looking on it. Louis, it's got stuff moving and yeah, okay. 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 <laughs> Ooh, it does look good. It looks mm -hmm. great. You guys, so far, we're liking what we see, but let's we face are. it, no man is to be trusted. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> let's and not it's coming believe from a anything. man, too. Do not trust us. <laughs> Do not trust this man. So, you know what? We still don't. We don't trust him. How about that? We still don't trust him. You know. <laughs> so, because, okay. But anyway, he, at least he's nice to her. She says that he's supportive and he wants her to win and he's in her corner. And let's face it, Lenny was not. So there we go. No bad day. Um, Andy starts to do his like friend of package. He's like, this season, you guys had a lot of fun. And then you hear like the pew, pew, pew. And it's Marisol <laughs> with the blow horn. And uh, she doesn't her. I I didn't mind her dress. I thought it kind of it, it would match, but her hair her. and like makeup and stuff wasn't great for her. Yeah, like the color is different. I think she needs to be a little bit blonder. I thought uh, Adriana looked great. Yes, I like the bird. <laughs> yeah, she. I thought her hair and her makeup looked wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, her Adriana's first question is um about the brazilian butt lip like do you not see the audacity in you asking larsa to come with you to get the brazilian butt lift and adriana took a left turn i did not see coming I, no one could have predicted <laughs> she's like that's right because i am brazilian and it is called brazilian butt lift i am not appropriating it it's not lebanese butt lift <laughs> no one knew what to do no, no one even took it seriously everyone was like oh that's what you're gonna say right <laughs> i expected a lot of responses that was not one of them no one could no one even they're like we're gonna drop it and then it was like <laughs> it was giving her an opportunity to be honest about it and so no one really gives her too much shit and andy goes so does everyone here believe that larsa did not get one and it's, it's, I have to say, it's actually really funny because then he's like, Alexia, do you, do you not believe it? And she goes, uh, look, if she says she did not get one, you know, it's her body. So I'm like, so you didn't really technically answer that. Right. And then Marisol too, she's like, okay, like, you know, people's bodies change. And then she goes, she just got heavy. I'm like, okay, listen, that wasn't. <laughs> What I think she's like heavier, heavier. I'm like, I, right, I, even worse. you nope, don't know what's worse. happening. This isn't going well. <laughs> no. Nope. So uh. another turn I didn't see coming was when Marisol's asked about her drinking. Like someone submits a thing saying, you know, do you think you drink too much? I didn't expect her to get defensive. I kind of expected her to lean into it and be like, probably I probably have no liver left right. or something like that. But instead, she's like, 
I drink as much as everyone else drinks here. I'm basic. She just she admits that she's faking it. She's like, I drink a lot in my in my confessionals because I'm building my brand. It's for my brand. I'm like, so you're pretending Her future brands. I'm like, Her, what? Uh, future, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Then Nicole gets asked. So what did you mean when you said, you know, Marisol's drunk all the time? And Marisol's like, Nicole, you drink more than everyone. Girl. And th- no one, like not one person was like, yes, you do. You drink more. <laughs> right. <laughs> no one is into that. But then Marisol is like, you're mean. You punched me in my arm at your, en- I could not believe that. So, I I ugh. was like, what is she talking about? Then when they showed her, I was like, no, I, okay. That's not, <laughs> she's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not, we can't do this. Yeah. It's what they do. (laughs) We are not going to do this today. It's what they do. You know what this kind of put me in the mind of? (sighs) When people get defensive like this about drinking, it's got to mean something. Because think back to when, like, all of the times they've confronted Sonia and Dorinda on Real Housewives in New York. And they never just like, I do have a new issue. It's because of this. I'm coping with this. Like the, the townhouse is driving me crazy. You know, they never do any of that. It is they so always, Dorinda. Yes. They always fight back and always, all this stuff. always. It's never a problem. And I'm like, Oh, that just kind of that's like another confirmation for me. Like if you can't say maybe I do drink a little too much. If you if you aren't watching the same show as I am and you don't think that you slurring these words that bad and you attacking all of your cast, you don't think any of that's a problem. Then, hey, what can I say? That is what made me unable to watch New York enjoyably was Dorinda's complete inability to Dorinda's own it. Dorinda's not fun. <laughs> yeah. And even so, I went the same way with Sonia. I'm like, Sonia, mm-hmm. we're watching a whole package of the, like, especially because when you're with someone who's that drunk, you you sober up when you're drinking with them because you're like, now I got to right. carry you out. You know what? And Dorinda and Sonia were like, I felt different ways watching them too. Neither one of them was good though. Like yes. with Dorinda, I'm like, oh, you're so angry all the time yes. when you're drinking. Like, I hate this. It's not enjoyable. With Sonia, I felt sad for her. Yes. Like every time she got drunk, I'm like, oh, it's, it's, I don't know. It, it just like, I always had the emotion. I'm like, New York is not enjoyable for me as it is for everyone else. Like this yep. is a little bit much for me. Yep. Same, 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 same. <sighs> but Anyway, Alexia joins in because she has to back up Marisol. She's like, yeah, Nicole, you got really mean at your party. Is that why you got so mean? But Nicole's like, I'm not playing this game. She goes, of course I got defensive. I was protecting my career, my profession, my reputation. So absolutely got protective of that. And then they just were like, oh, okay. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Shut up. Okay, you guys like she did not punch you. They have footage of it. Okay, they have push. She just. Gently, <laughs> not gently, fine. It was a little aggressive. <laughs> but she didn't punch you. It was you. knee jerk, right? She did not punch you. Oh my God. That is just such a Karen thing to do. It is. Get out of here. So, Andy, but then this part made me want to punch um, Larsa. Are we talking about the dad? Yes. That's what I had the most, like a visceral reaction to. That's when I was like, you know what? Fuck the left side of the like fuck the left couch. I am I'm not doing this shit with y'all today. Like get I would as much as I hate anyone. Right. I could never imagine defending that. Like, are you kidding me? Like, so Andy's like, do you think your dad will walk you down the aisle? And Alexia and Larsa just start interrupting. Like, of course, you're it's your parents. Your parents are your parents. But Marisol did actually come to her defense. And I was shocked yeah. by that. She's like, mm-hmm. I actually, I saw, what, I hung out with him at your party and I even, I was like, okay, I get it. A lot, yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> she's like com- coming from one drunk to another one. I know. She's, yeah, she's <laughs> like, and I can deal with a lot. And even I was like, right. whoa. Mm-hmm. And then they completely take over her segment about or Larsa does at least. Mm-hmm. And he's like, in therapy, your dad said he would be open to saying, I'm sorry to you. And Nicole goes, but he never did. And Larsa, this is nothing Idiot. to do Ugh. with you. She nothing. goes, she goes, I don't blame him. He's not going to say that. I mean, like you, you, hum- you humiliated that man, belittling a grown man. It's so stupid. Shut up. Shut what up. You, yeah, no one was talking to you. No one. Shut up. <laughs> 
up. She's How like, ignorant. I felt bad. I felt bad when I saw that scene. I mean, look, I did too. I cried because seeing him be vulnerable like that, I was like, oh, wow, what a really cool perspective for her to get. She didn't get to see his side of it and why he was sad. Um, but this is Nicole's turn to talk about this. Right. All weird. The, the fact that they're <sighs> really, they hate them, the newbies, so much because people can veil it as whatever they want to. They don't like the newbies. They can pretend they do. Yeah. They have a whole OG mentality like, no, this is our show. None of you have kissed the ring nearly as much. And that's our issue with you. That's the core of all of this. They hate this woman so much that they would literally say that a man shouldn't have to like face the thing that he's done in the past simply so he doesn't have to apologize to someone because it's on camera or because oh we, it was belittling to him. The, the girl got hit by a car because her dad but like all of this stuff that she's like bringing out and that he's acknowledging happened oh but i can't get an apology are you kidding me and y'all are backing that ignorant toxic ass behavior up how literally i Alexia literally goes lower and lower in my book every single time. Larsa, it's all like lives in a pits of hell. So like, it's almost like laughable at this point that she, you know, no one's going to hold her accountable for anything. But Alexia literally, it's almost like she wants to be viewed as dumb. I don't feel like that's the only way I can say like, why else would you, what a, what a stupid take, what a stupid position to take. Just it's, dumb. It's so insensitive. Mm -hmm. It's not happening to you. <laughs> it is she it, it Nicole Nicole is like it's just such a simple step. It would mean something to me to have him apologize. And Larsa just keeps repeating over and over, just accept him. He's your dad. And finally Nicole starts crying. And Andy's mm -hmm. like, now, why did that make you cry? And she's like, look, get, getting called like a spoiled brat. It's it's hard because no one knows the pain I've been through. I'm remembering that I was in the emergency room and in the hospital because I got run over by a car because he right. couldn't protect me. And so I'm like, yeah, exactly. Shut the fuck up, Lars. <laughs> right. <shut> up. <laughs> so stop. And then Nicole starts talking about how she hasn't met the girlfriend and she's because she's upset that Nicole called her a hoochie mama on camera. And Andy's like, well, <laughs> that makes a little bit of sense. And it's going just fine. And I think Lisa asks, how old is the girlfriend? And Larsa interrupts because she's so triggered by so the talk defensive. of age. She's like, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Why is age important? It doesn't matter if he's happy. And it's like, okay, look, we get that you and Marcus Jordan have an age gap, but her dad is 70. Right. And this woman is like 27. And Ooh. it's a little different. And Larsa just keeps, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he's happy. It doesn't matter. Why are you talking, Larsa? This is not your segment. It's not her segment. I don't even know what her segment would be, honestly. We she literally like this season was just in the mess. <laughs> so yes. I don't even know. Maybe she just wants to be in everyone else's business so bad. Ugh. But it's like calm the fuck down. Like Girl, what are you doing? Get out it was of here. too much. I'm glad to know that that triggered you too, because that whole segment, I was like, my you know that Arthur meme where he has his fist balled yes. up. So I, my fist was like that the entire time. I'm like, are y'all? Is this like I felt like I was being punked? I'm like, are y'all serious right now? It's is just this so, what I'm it's watching? so personal. Like it's her dad and Ooh. her relationship with her dad. Right. Why are you chiming in? You're not even good friends with her. Can we keep in mind too? I'm someone whose father isn't even here anymore. My dad passed away, and I'm saying, get that toxic ass father out of your life. Like, don't conceive. <laughs> That's to that a shit. great point. Actually, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Because Alexia is always like, I lost my parents, so I know. That's her thing, right? Her thing is like, I'm and I, I'm the expert on this, and right. I blah blah. I just I, I can't. It's oh god. Ugh. Andy does pivot right away because he's like, speaking of big age gaps, you and Marcus <laughs> Jordan, you know, the people people say that actually he's closer in age to your son mm -hmm. than he is to you. And she's like, I haven't done the math. I'm not good at math. I haven't done the the numbers. And and someone's like, What how old are you? And how old is he? Let me do that right. for you real quick. Let me just tip my calculator out. Um anyway, they get off that. And I want Wait, to can I say I oh, I do ahead, love that please. in the dressing room when Andy comes in, like when it first the episode first comes on, he's like, Where's Marcus? Where is he here? And, and Lars is literally like, 
he's right behind you literally the black man like standing right there like do you not see him and like turns around like oh hey buddy like okay (laughs) Andy, you know who the hell that was like stop you knew he was there production told you as soon as you walked in marcus is here marcus (laughs) is with her he's here i wonder if he's gonna have anything to say because he's been watching backstage this whole time Uh, i was wondering this i was getting nervous he's like he's there he can hear hear you with all this news coming out in the bravo verse i have no time to be shopping in a grocery store or figuring out what recipe ingredients to get or chopping and prepping a million things absolutely not hello fresh knows that i don't have time for that so they deliver me fresh meals to my door with pre-portioned ingredients so I don't have to worry about all that nonsense. And while I am normally a disaster in a kitchen, when it comes to HelloFresh, there's those easy-to-follow recipe cards that even I can get through. For me, HelloFresh scratches multiple itches. The itch to have food delivered, which I don't know why I like love having things delivered directly to me. The second itch is wanting to eat better. That's a big one. And March is National Nutrition Month. And HelloFresh makes it easy to choose delicious, dietitian approved meals. Simply look for the dietitian win tag on their menu choices for meals that are under 700 calories and with one third less sodium. The third itch HelloFresh scratches. It is so much less expensive than ordering delivery. Go to HelloFresh.com slash SheSpeaks60 and use code SheSpeaks60 for 60% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash SheSpeaks60 and use code SheSpeaks60 for 60% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. 2023 is my year of having the confidence of a housewife. Like Lisa Barlow says, You don't have to like me. I love myself enough for the both of us. So in order to work on that confidence, I'm going to be using Kitsch's game-changing beauty essentials. Whatever your budget, your skin type, your hair type, Kitsch believes you deserve little indulgences at affordable prices morning, noon, and night. Kitsch was started in 2010, and they sold hair ties door to door, okay? They are self-funded, female-founded, and after all that hustle, they are now sold in over 20,000 retail locations. Such badasses. Their best sellers, and for me, this was what pulled me into Kitsch, are their satin pillowcases because you do not want to be sleeping on a regular dry pillowcase. You want a soft satin, vegan satin, not silk, cruelty-free You want that against your face for the wrinkles and to protect your hair. They also make that same satin into nightcaps and eye masks, all with the idea of preserving and protecting your precious hair and skin while you sleep. They have shampoo and conditioner bars. That's right, bars. Hello Environment, Bottle Free Beauty, and their biggest claim to fame are their heatless satin curling rollers. Say goodbye to heat damage. There are TikTok videos of people throwing out their $600 curlers for these. The amazing thing is they are only a fraction of the price at $18. Kitsch, of course, has the classic quick dry hair towels, their hair ties and scrunchies, and so much more. I personally own nothing but Kitsch hair ties, nothing but their pillowcases, and nothing but their quick dry hair towels. The way I found Kitsch was because I did a bad at-home haircut, needed to grow my hair out, and that's when I learned that regular towels were not to be used on your hair, pillowcases are a culprit for breakage, and hair ties. Kitsch, in my opinion, leads the market in preserving and protecting your hair and skin. Right now, Kitsch is offering 30% off your entire order when you go to mykitsch.com slash she speaks. That's right. 30% off any and everything at mykitsch, spelled M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash she speaks. One more time, mykitsch.com slash she speaks for 30% off your order. Mm. Um. John Mayer, when Andy FaceTimes John Mayer and uh-huh. is and Nicole gets to talk to him, I forgot that he was her hall pass. John Mayer. Right. John Mayer. 
<laughs> right. Of all, that is your hall pass? Girl. Okay. 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 Right. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. You like it? I love it. Sure. Can I ask a random question? Sure. I don't know why this just made, we were talking about Marcus, and I was about to say uh, they should bring him out for a segment, but then I was thinking, why don't all of the shows do the husband thing because like you know like it's a big deal on potomac girl, like they shame girl. the girls and like oh your husband's not here again and you know like that kind of stuff but like other shows they like don't even like think of inviting the husband but like we know mauricio we know pk like there's never like a segment of like and the husbands are here beverly hills used to do it every year and they have not done it right i wonder let me, i'd have to go back when did they stop doing it on beverly hills Let's maybe see. like pk's first season because he was there to talk about like panty gate wasn't he yes he was and i feel like it because it's got to be some mm. sort of a thing where they figure out like okay they wouldn't do it they wouldn't do it so why even bother mm. And because Todd and Anthony should 100 percent. That would be fun to watch them duke it out. (laughs) Yes. And who else would there be? Russell wouldn't say anything. Russell would be like, just mute. But at least we'd get to look at them. Like, that's nice. (laughs) Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, who is that? Uh, Marisol's married. He could be there. Yeah. Lisa's boyfriend is back there. It'd be weird if he came out, but I mean, he, she has the option, you know. Wow, good point. Yeah, we definitely don't, because it's such a big deal when when the other husbands don't show up or the other men don't show up. Well, look at that. <laughs> we should have written that into Andy Cohen as a question. No. Mm. Why do we not have a husband segment? Right. Huh. And not even just particular Miami. I'm just always wondering, like, other shows. I'm like, I wonder why they don't do the husband thing. That's weird. I know that on Beverly Hills, they did not do it because, you know, Mauricio and Pika were like, we're not doing the reunion. Especially There's last no year. no way. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way we're not doing yeah. it. For the last two years, they didn't do it because they were like, no, 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 no. We're going to mm-hmm. get in too much trouble. So they didn't do it. for, And so they're like, we can't have a husband segment because no one's going to do it. Harry's Nobody not wants showing to see up. Harry Hamlin's ass, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he wouldn't, like, just none of them would sign up. So there's a reason for that. So I'm guessing that Todd wouldn't do it and Anthony wouldn't do it. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's like they just won't participate. Right. As where, oh, interesting. I bet that's like, it. Maybe I, it's got to be because I think about um, like some of the shows, it's husbands, maybe it's like how heavily involved they are. But Miami seems like one where yeah. you would at least invite like Todd and Anthony. That would make sense to me. But like Jersey, the husbands get a segment. Potomac, oh, yeah. the husbands get a segment. Atlanta. Atlanta, usually don't they? The husbands get, yeah. The oh, came every, out this past every year. Yeah. 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 So it's weird. I don't. I'm always just. I'm, I'm always wondering like inconsistencies across the franchise. Oh my it's god, Kendrick! I just thought of something. Oh, Ralph is probably going to have a one-on-one <gasps> sit down with Andy. Oh, he probably won't go to the reunion, but he'll have Ooh. a one-on-one fucking sit down with Andy. That they'll be like, um, I sat down with Ralph, and I fucking like talked right. to him about his stupid thoughts. Nobody cares. Oh, we just want to see him get run through the ringer. We don't care yeah. about his thoughts. We, I want Ugh. him like sitting in the middle of the circle, and they can You're all just right. like, yell at him. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. If I if I cared about Ralph's thoughts, I'd buy that fucking third grade book he wrote. But I haven't done <laughs> yeah. that, so. But I know not I have happen. a feeling that's what's gonna happen because we're gonna have a oh, whole absolutely. season of watching him. And mm-hmm. if he was a man. He would go to the reunion in person and mm-hmm. just talk and like take it, but no, he'll be like, "I'm not showing up. You can talk to me privately." Yep, the man that ran to People Magazine, so I'm sure he's gonna want a one on one. He's like, "I filed, I filed for divorce. That's right, <laughs> I did, sure did." Mm-hmm. Asshole. No, no. God. Um, it was weird when Andy started when Andy introduced this package i thought he was talking about adriana because he's like move over streisand and gaga i'm like oh it's a singing package so it's gonna be about <laughs> he's like another star is born and then it was alexia i'm like oh yeah i forgot right that. like oh she completely okay. forgot that. it was not the best thing for andy to be like can we all agree you're all narcissists i was like whoa Right. Dude. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's like a whole personality disorder, and that's right. not something you accuse people of, you crazy. Weirdo. But my favorite is Larsa going, I'm not. And I was like, okay, you're actually the one person who is. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
I was expecting like Gertie and Nicole to yes. be like, I'm, no, I'm not a narcissist. Julia, Gertie, Nicole, right. but Larsa was like, nope, actually you are. You are one of them. <laughs> and Alexia's like, confidence is a good thing. And it's my package, so I'm going to start talking. And Andy goes, Ugh. oh, okay, well, um, Jesus. And <laughs> then Adriana comes in clutch. She goes, hold on. I'm studying psychology. Here is a definition of narcissism. And I died because the first things he says, I'm like, whoa, that's Alexia. He's like, a grandiose <laughs> sense of self-importance, arrogance, mm -hmm. lack of empathy for others. And I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And then Alexia goes, well, that's clearly not me. <laughs> is it clear though maybe <laughs> opaque i don't know <laughs> i was like or his spot the fuck on right <laughs> it's so dead on and then andy goes like, he keeps reading it and he's like okay so maybe you're not all narcissists sorry about that they're like yeah dude like <laughs> being confident is not the same as narcissism and so alexia's thing is like my parents told me i was special i'm like Okay. Their problem, though, is that you are saying that basically they're all jealous of you. Right. It's giving Luann. It's giving Countess Cabaret yes. Luann. It's literally the season where Luann was insufferable. And mm -hmm. when Bethany, like, freaks out on her and it's like, it's Cabaret. Life what a is not scene. a Cabaret. What it's a that. scene. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's that. It's like, yeah, how I'm we drinking Luann. <laughs> it's, it is that feeling where it's like, Alexia. I think it's Ramona earlier in that same episode tries to be like, all the girls are just feeling like you're just so self-centered. And Luann's like, mm -hmm, I hear you. They're all jealous of me. They all wish they <laughs> could have a, a cabaret. It's like, Gosh. no. And that's what Alexia is giving. They're like, no, we're saying it sucks that you put us down. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you all resent the fact that I'm resilient. <laughs> and we're like no one literally on the history of the world has ever has ever been jealous of that about someone sorry why, why would anyone <laughs> be jealous of that so weird yes i am so jealous of your resilience i'm pissed about it <laughs> how dare you have that and then larsa's like what has she done to you gertie i'm like larsa i swear to god if you don't fucking shut Right. But Gertie goes, God. I'm like, are you kidding? Gert She's done plenty to Gertie. Like, right. Gertie, Gertie was at the, are you crazy? Gertie's like, I sent you flowers. And you're like, oh, I already have flowers. And then they cut to her the being snob. a total asshole about mm -hmm. the flowers. And I'm like, that is also just the minor thing she did. Then she made right. fun of Gertie as a party planner and how she's so mm. difficult. And what does she do? Alexia doubles down on it. Yep. Like always. Like always. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad because I know Gertie. I understand completely why Gertie was offended when Alexia was like, oh, my God, your charity thing. That was nothing compared to Marisol's Bachelorette. Right. I get it. But Alexia continues to repeat. I wasn't saying about your charity. I was saying the decor. She, it's like a loop. It's like a Teresa loop. You'll never get her out of it. No, you'll and it's like it's you'll just there's no getting through to her, and I hate it because it's like poor Gertie. I, 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 she'll just never get what she wants out of it. Never just be her enemy. I would like to see that. Thank yes. you. Yes, <laughs> and now and you and Gertie has said repeatedly in a couple interviews since the reunion, she's like, I get it now, and don't yep. worry, I'm ready. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes, I'm ready to. Yay! And Alexia, Alexia has the nerve. She's like, I'm happy you weren't available for my party because you're so difficult to work with. She's the difficult one. <laughs> The one that couldn't pin you down to go look at locations. And like, we saw this play out on TV. Like, who do you think you're convincing right now? And like, we see how busy Gertie is. Right. Heaven forbid she wasn't available. Heaven forbid she wasn't Ugh. available. And she's like, okay, I can't do it. I have a I'm booked that day at a wedding for someone paying full price. Because right. you're probably not going to pay full price. Nope. And then Alexia does this was masterful what Gertie did. Alexia goes, You mistreat your driver, Manu. You castrate Russell. You mistreat everybody. And Gertie just goes, You're a full blown liar. Chaos and confusion is the way you argue. And she mm -hmm. just stops. I was like, oh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, you <laughs> did it. You got, you nailed it. She yep. fucking nailed that. You That's exactly what Alexia does. Yep. 
Because what the hell did that come from? It's so weird. Her and Lars are both like they don't want to argue about the exact thing that we're talking about. So they just like pull rumors yes. out of the farthest crack in our ass and oh. then just bring it out. It's like, what are we talking about right now? Ooh. This has nothing to do with the actual issue. What are we talking about? Then so they dumb. bring up the Russian prostitute comment. And Alexia goes, look, I didn't realize it was such a sensitive issue for you. I'm like, no, 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 no. You haven't learned anything. <gasps> you didn't realize how ignorant you were in general. That's what right. you were supposed to say. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, OK, great. OK, great. But I love Marisol trying to help Alexia because she's trying to say there's a stigma. But Marisol <laughs> goes, stigmatism. <laughs> I'm like perfect yeah help her out that way that's great that's God, wonderful that if, if anything sums up their friendship it's that moment because of course you're uh giving her an alley-oop with like the dumbest word you can think of like not even on brand of like, course yep. that's how you help yeah that was it help keep helping there you her go. keep going God. yeah but so julia then is like i'm glad you are apologizing now because it sounds a little more sincere and then she's explaining mm-hmm. why It's a horrible stereotype because Russian women just come to America trying to give their children better lives and opportunities. And Alexia's like, "Uh, yeah, I know. I come from immigrant parents. And Andy's like, exactly. So that's kind of the point. Wouldn't you hate it if like people sort of judged you on the worst stereotypes about Cubans? And she's and I knew she was going to do this as soon as she started talking. She goes, oh, and by the way, they have. But, you know, it's not something like I even think Uh. about, you know, I just let it go, which is kind of like stop being a crybaby. Okay, that kind of vibe. That was the vibe Uh. she had. It's like the thing when like uh, (laughs) like when like women uh, talk about like how hard it is in the workplace Mm -hmm. and how they have to deal with like these gross men, like their boss is like hitting on him stuff like that but then there's that other woman that's like well i just ignored it and i still got to the top and i did like this who gives a fuck that doesn't mean that the issue isn't still there like what are you doing it's exactly that what are you doing it's It's like this is it just starts the string of her inability to apologize it's like viewer question did you ever apologize for saying Thierry was (laughs) married when he's not i am never going to apologize ever i'm never because you know what you were renting him this is the second time she's accused adriana the second season in a row of this (laughs) the dialogue here is pretty funny because alexia messes up She's like, she's because I think Adriana says something like, he's a doctor. Like, how would I? This isn't like someone. And Alexia's like, everyone has a price tag, my love. And Adriana goes, including yourself. And Alexia <laughs> goes, um, nobody buys me with love. And she's like, oh, wait, I messed up. I meant to say <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> I mean, people people don't buy me with money. They buy me with love. That's what I meant to say. I meant to say that. I meant to say that. That, like, that was a Freudian <laughs> slip right there. She's yeah. like, oh, shit. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. No, no. Wait a minute. Correct. Oopsies. Correct. <laughs> but then, dude, when Adriana pulled out those text messages from February 25th, 2020, mm-hmm. between Alexia and herself, Mm-hmm. where it's Alexia saying, oh, so-and-so reached out. He would like your number. Let me know if that's okay. And Adriana's like, well, hold on. Isn't he married? I don't want to date a married man. That's bad karma. Boom. And Alexia says, well, I think he always liked you. And truthfully, his marriage has never been good. And at one point, Larsa sees that this is going to be damning evidence and does what any good wing woman would do who's trying to commit a crime for a friend. And she goes, why are we reading texts? It's so stupid. You're like, girl, okay, calm because, down. All right. And Alexia is like, she knows she's busted. And she goes, yeah, yeah. And? And? <laughs> this is like, and to me, what was so ironic about this was that literally moments ago, they were asking Lisa about her relationship with Lenny. And it was Larsa that came out and said, yeah, she caught him in a hot tub. With How do you know she wanted that out there? You oh, just told point. her business. Like, what do you mean you're so upset about these text messages? You're doing the exact same thing. Like, get out of here. That is a good point. She does mm. this shit all the time. All the time. And then because Alexia is busted, she goes, the point is, why don't we talk about the father of your son? I'm like, that's not the what's that's the point. <laughs> Adriana's like, huh? Adriana even like, goes, what? what? That's <laughs> why don't I don't understand where that came from at all. No. And then Andy's La La like, Land. Alexia, um, it is the opinion of the viewers that you don't really own up to things and apologize. Like right now. 
Yeah, and I would say like, that's fair. <laughs> and she's like, okay, maybe I have a hard time apologizing because mine are sincere. And I'm sorry if I don't mean I'm sorry, so I can't say I'm sorry. Girl. <sighs> oh, 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 girl. This is when Nicole's like, listen, okay. <laughs> the problem is, though, when something's done to you, we have to apologize. And if you don't like the apology, we have to suck your toes. And now Larsa's like, stop. Okay, stop. Stop. Adrian goes. Do you think she got so offended because she brought up feet? Yes, she's like, "That's my brand, <laughs> right? That is my like fucking nobody brand. Nobody talks about feet except me. Get that out of here. That is my thing. And this is where <laughs> the freaking Adriana's like, Larsa, stay out of it. And Adriana goes, "You stay out of it, looking like a bird." <laughs> I will say, I did that laugh. Was funny. At that. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Yeah. Andy then goes like, Nicole, how did you feel about the Amex moment and all that? She's like, I was actually pretty pleasantly surprised because they made it seem like I did this whole horrible thing. And Lisa's like, let me just say something, guys. You were all embarrassing. Looking at you, Alexia, like stop acting like you were not embarrassing. Now that's a friend right there. Someone that calls everybody out for the dumb stuff. Yeah. And Andy, but I, Andy's so I actually did love this. Andy's like, I've never related to anyone more on these shows than I did to that attorney. (laughs) (laughs) I can Uh, see the comparison. Me too. Nicole, though, (laughs) Anthony apparently did apologize. And Nicole, Nicole's like, listen, hold on, Alexia. When you said something that was insulting to all Russian women, you go, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, I said I'm sorry. Let it go. But Adriana had to grovel for three episodes to get you to forgive her. Mm-hmm. And and Alexia is like, you guys tortured me on the bus. Girl. <laughs> I was even like, what is she talking about? I was like, oh, you mean that one little tiny conversation that, they had right. the, that you had a fight with Julia? That's all that happened is you were fighting right. with Julia. And Nicole's like, you tortured me. You made me take you out to dinner, text mm-hmm. you. And Alexia's like, well, yeah, yeah, you, you were wrong. What you did was wrong. So. God. I'm like, you don't see it. You don't see the double standards. Nothing will fucking make her see it, you guys. Nothing. 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 It'll never Nothing. happen. Nicole's it will like, never Nicole's happen. making so much sense. It's so frustrating. She's like, you make all of us work for an apology, but you can't give one. And she's uh-huh. like, well, I was attacked all season by you guys. All season, you guys attacked me because I'm confident. And Lisa's oh, like, Lisa, Lisa tries to help her out and give her like a layup. She's like, maybe because you perceived us as attacking you. And that's why you were like, I'm a star. I'm a star. And Alexia goes, I still believe that. And I encourage all of you to believe it, because if you believe that, then maybe Lenny would not do all the things he's done to you. What an asshole. Are you kidding me? So not only... <laughs> Are we excusing Lenny at this point? We're now saying that the man who has cheated on her, tried to throw her out of the house, who said, I know I had to get the court involved because you're not just going to leave on your own, who has like put their kids through all of this. Oh, no, no, no. It's not on his shoulders. It's on yours, Lisa. You're the one that couldn't keep that man happy. You're the one who didn't have enough confidence. Do I- Alexia, respectfully, go to hell <laughs> immediately. And... She did the same face when she said the prostitute Russian prostitute comment where she knows she messed up. But she's like, what? OK, I'm going to I can say whatever I want because mm. she can't admit like, oh, fuck, that wasn't the right thing that came out of my mouth. God, I mean. So, yeah, what, are, what an God. idiot. God. <laughs> God. Well, oh. next week, next week, Larissa's about to say that she had sex four times a night for 23 years. Girl. No, you didn't. <laughs> no. No, you didn't. 23 <laughs> years, four times a night. Four. Nobody believes that. Nobody believes that. No. No human. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. 23 you said- you know, they say when you get it from behind, that's what makes your butt get bigger. I, if she uses that as an excuse, <laughs> instead of admitting to that damn if that's, BBL. If that's what that sound bite is from, if that, 
if that's what they pulled that soundbite from, then maybe I'll oh believe that that's maybe she's kidding. And they just pulled the soundbite. But if she's right. fucking serious, then I'm about to. Girl. At one point, they show the clip of Andy looking like he wants to actually slap someone. And it's from right. the left side of the couch. So it's probably Larsa because he did admit that he yelled at someone. And it looks like he's like, you need to like he, he actually is like getting out of his seat. Like, wait, did you did you hear what that was about? The bastard child, right? Yeah, it was that's what about, Gertie uh, said, right? Yeah, like uh, bringing up like how kids are born and if like uh, what was it? Was it surrogacy? If if surrogacy is considered like bastard kids because it's not that kind of stuff. So, Larsa, like girl, calm down. Like, are you kidding? <laughs> She's so oh, stupid. Down. Oh my god. It's- She's so dumb. Oh. Mm. And then Alexia and Adriana get into a screaming match in the hallway. And Alexia says, I don't apologize to the devil. <laughs> You're taking it too far. Like Can the I amount say- the amount that Adriana's apologized, I'm right. saying so, by now we know she's she has totally owned up to the fact that it was wrong. Mm-hmm. I think she's done. Right. What were you? We don't get apologies. If it was Alexia, we would have never gotten an apology for it. So literally, she'd say, "No, I'm not going to apologize." Right. I love a good backstage reunion hallway fight. Like I love it across like all of the French, like the shows on Broadway. I just love when they like get into those hall fights. I always think about. uh, (laughs) I can't even talk about without laughing, but I always think about. The season two Merit to Medicine reunion, which is like one of my like all time favorites, because like the set was gorgeous. Do you remember like those when they were sitting like in the rainforest, like at the tables? And oh, yeah, you know, they were like they were so mad at Mariah, like all of the girls. And it was so it was a thing where Toya and Qua, not Toya and Simone got into it and it bled like through backstage and. Simone's son was in the room, one of her sons, and Toya's walking out because they were arguing in the room. She's like, you know what? I'm going to leave and I'm going to be show you what it's like to be a good example of a mother since you can't be. And she was walking out and Simone was like, are you being a good example of a mother with your raggedy, broke ass, leasing houses and leasing car? Toya turns around so fast because not a lot offends Toya, but when you talk about her money... When you talk about them not being good with money, oh, it offends her every time. She turned around. Quad had to get in the middle of them. Dr. Jackie, the makeup artist, Eugene had to come in the room. Like it was about to be a melee back there. Oh, I remember now. St- yes, it was the hands one of the best. God, Merit to Medicine has some good ass reunions. They do. Oh my they god. They really do. Oh, that's a moment. I I use that sound bite all the time. And are you being a good example with your raggedy broke ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it so much. I love it. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining me. So last minute, this was totally last minute. Literally hours ago, we planned this. I really appreciate yes. it. Of course. You for know, when you call, I come running. I appreciate it. Can we tell the people where they can follow you and find you? I know. I haven't been here in years. Um, I know. <laughs> you can find me everywhere you listen to Emily, Apple, Spotify, Google, I heart. I heart. Hey, I uh, heart. Hey, guys. And find me all little places. Reality and Comics 2 with me, Kendrick Tucker. Follow me on Instagram at Reality Comics 2. That's T O O. Come for the podcast. Stay for the memes. Woo. All right, guys. Yeah. Love you. Mean it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, would you mind leaving me a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you are listening? If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget there is the super thanks option down at the bottom, the little button with the dollar sign and the heart. And also I'm on buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks bravo if you want to buy me a little coffee or two or five. And my Patreon, that is where I'm covering all of the classic Bravo jams. If you want to follow me over there and subscribe, link is in the description. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok at She Speaks Bravo. And whoever the guest was for today, all their information is always in the episode description. So if you want to follow them and check them out, check there for the info. And any of the sponsor codes that I mentioned in this episode will also be in the description. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.